We are now joined by Lobsang Sangai, the president of the Central Tibetan Administration and political successor to His Holiness the Dalai Lama of Tibet. Mr Sangai, welcome. What does the anniversary mean to you personally, someone who's never been to Tibet? Um, it means an unification of China, but illegal and violent occupation of Tibet. According to Chinese military archive from the month of March, uh, of 1959 to October of 1960, 87,000 uh, Tibetans were killed. And you know, 98% of monasteries and nunneries were destroyed. 99% of monks and nuns were disrobed. So yes, it means for us, the anniversary means destruction, illegal occupation, and violent takeover of the Tibetan people. Chinese President Xi Jinping recently called for efforts to ensure enduring peace and stability and to improve people's lives in Tibet. What do you make of this? I think, like Xi Jinping, the Chinese leaders like Mao Zedong have said also, Tibet is the palm we take over, then we go after five fingers from Ladakh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim and Arunachal, right? So, and Xi Jinping himself have said, that stability and you know uh, security of China is dependent on stability and security of Tibet. So for China, Tibet is very, very important. It's 2.5 million square kilometers of land. It's as big as Western Europe. So lots of mineral resources. So when one when he says peace, it means assimilation of Tibetans. When he says stability, which means the repression of the Tibetan people, control Tibet. That's what he means. Chinese officials uh, would point towards Tibet literacy rising from around 5% to 85%. And there has also been major investment in infrastructure, schools and hospitals. Have these changes benefited Tibetans? Well, in exile, for example, an exile refugee community, the literacy rate is 94%. So we are doing better than them, right? So all the infrastructure, like in your short film also you showed, the railway line brings more Chinese to Tibet and takes more natural resources from Tibet to China. Similarly, the road uh, connecting mostly connects to our natural resources. Airport also brings more troops, more Chinese. So this is an assimilation drive. So yes, they talk about development. The question is who benefits? And primarily, Chinese people benefit development projects in Tibet. You are the elected Tibetan leader, but you're in exile. How difficult is it for you to fight for your cause? It is difficult because you're in exile, you know, and then whatever happens around the world affects you, including the American president election or change in prime ministership of Japan or any country in Europe. But you do the best you can to impact the world. And so far, for the last 60 years, we are still standing on our feet and we are still, you know, uh, pursuing uh, nonviolence as our principle and to genuine autonomy as our goal. So we are still here. Dr. Lobsang Sangai, President of the Central Tibetan Administration. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much.